Oh, I came so close to getting stuck in the elevator at the garage. That's my greatest fear. Oh. And there's no AC. That's all right. We'll set it on that here. It was just not moving anywhere. All right. Thank you. The next person on the docket will be appointed. You can go. Uh, <laughs> Elijah Guillory. Mr. Guillory, you have three cases here. Uh, three eight eight nine five three eight six nine. I'm sorry. Three eight six nine five three eight six nine six three eight six nine seven. Murder, aggravated robbery, and cruelty. All of those in that numerical sequence. Mr. Smith is your attorney. Mr. Smith has filed. Uh, application for medical leave to uh, withdraw on his cases for medical purposes, and that will be uh, granted. And some, the next person on the trial docket, will you're unable to hire somebody, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yes, yeah. So the next person on the trial docket, will will be appointed to uh, represent you. I wanted just you to know that. Uh, and there was no way this was going to be resolved without a trial. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Then somebody will be appointed today. Thank you. And then uh, Richard Hernandez, please. It's in this first rodeo on the offender, a sex offender registration, huh? Yeah. 239083 is called Richard Hernandez. That's you, correct? Yes. And we're back again. I never left jail. Uh huh. I've been able to stick 2022. You were convicted in 2020, right? And, uh, for a uh, failure to comply with sex offender registration in the court next door, the 257. Well, that's what this says. We all know it is. You were convicted in 2020. So this new indictment alleges that in April of 2021, you failed again to register properly. So this is normally a third degree felony, but with the prior 2020 conviction from the court next door, it's enhanced to a second degree felony punished two to 20. Were you properly registered now? Well, yeah, I was uh, already registered. Yeah, whatever uh, the grand jury felt otherwise. That, but or it's uh, my, grand jury, but uh, may I ask something? Can I get to check in office to get these papers, the uh, information to you? Here's what I'm going to do. Number one, uh, Mr. Smith, your attorney, has applied for release and withdrawal of his representation of his cases for medical reasons. I'm going to grant that. I wanted you to know that. The well, next good. I just get a lawyer or something. Lord. Are you going to interrupt me or am I going to make this a solo and then you'll be having a chance to speak? Okay, just don't interrupt. That's rude. The next lawyer on the court appointed list will be appointed. You can always hire someone if you're able to, but the next attorney will be uh, assigned in your case. Do you understand? Then you're free to go. Thank you. That is all. Next is Terrell Thomas. And again, another defendant shows why they are in custody. Or if rudeness was a crime, they would be a felon in that one. Terrell Thomas. 
Mr. Harold Thomas, please. No, it's no fun being in custody, but still rudeness is rudeness, and that's inappropriate. You're Terrell Thomas. Yes. And you were charged here at aggravated kidnapping in uh, these two cases, 39670-39671. Bruce Smith has been appointed to represent you. Mr. Smith has now filed motions to withdraw from all of his cases for medical reasons. He has a medical issue that needs to be taken care of. You're not able to hire anybody, I presume. Yeah. The next, that's no, right? Okay. So the next person on the trial appointment list will be appointed uh, under the indigent commission's rules to represent you. I don't know who that will be because we've had to replace five cases now, And uh, but they will be appointed and will be assigned to get with you as soon as possible uh, so that this these cases are over 500 days old and they need to move one way or the other. You'd agree. Oh, yes. I just wanted you to know that, and he's going to be uh, allowed to withdraw, uh, and another lawyer will be appointed, so you'll know it's not going to be him, it'll be somebody else. Okay, thank you, thank you sir. Thank you. Anything else? I think. Yeah, on the other side. Okay. All right, Mr. Armstrong, why were you late? No, no he was late because I called the name and I put NP for not present. He was, he was, he would have been outside in Judge. He was here two days ago for three hours, and I, I don't anticipate that it was anything intentional. I think he may have just been outside because he was texting me this morning while I was on a Zoom hearing. So, apologies. Okay. So we're here for a motion to revoke. Yes, Your Honor. Are both parties ready? Yes, Your Honor. Court is calling 2022 CR 0686, State of Texas versus John Carlo Cisneros Armstrong. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. Hank Powers for Mr. Armstrong, Your Honor. And are you John Carlo Cisneros Armstrong? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you're placed on deferred adjudication in 2022 CR 0686 for the offense of aggravated sexual assault. On June 14th, 2022, for a term of eight years. Is that you? Yes, Your Honor. State? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, off the record, this was reduced to attempted, and it's not listed in the motion to revoke as a attempted. And we will stipulate to the attempted, Your Honor. All right, so I will reread. Uh, All right, can we go off the record? Can you mute us, please? Violated condition number one, on or about the 12th day of August, 2023, in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Jean Carlos Cisnero Armstrong, committed the offense of failure to identify in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True, Your Honor. And Your Honor, we've waived the other violations alleged in the motions. All right. Any objections to the waiver? No, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of conditions one and one, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violations conditions one and one? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find violations one and one true. Is there an agreement? There is, Your Honor. Uh, the defendant has agreed to uh, uh, state ISF, Judge. Okay. And that is the agreement, Your Honor. Is this just state IS cognitive? It is, Judge. Uh, we checked a couple of days ago. I believe it would be a 40 day wait inpatient, and I believe a 90 day inpatient after that. So. He's, he's aware that he's looking at a commitment of 130 days. All right. And is he eligible for state ISF? 
Your Honor, he uh, will be. I, I forgot to mention. I, I he pled true to these two violations. But with the state is going to TIC the uh, the underlying. Uh, All right. And what are the cause numbers? You, just you can talk from. I've got them for you. Hank. Oh, thanks. Your Honor, one of them is 714734. Mm -hmm. and the other one is 714735. They were both out of the same incident. All right. The court will find violations of one and one true. Probation, are you in agreement with this recommendation? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, the court will deny the motion, alter and amend conditions. To include state ISF cognitive, taking consideration 714734 and 714735. Mr. Armstrong, is there anything else you need from the court so you can obey the rules and be a productive citizen? May I speak on his back, Your Honor? He was no, I, I, I want to know if there's anything else he needs. Oh, yeah, there's one thing, Your Honor. There's yes. Just if i may be able to attend church again oh no we're, we're not even at that that point we're at the point where you're on deferred adjudication you're looking at 20 years in prison and you picked up two number ones so what i'm trying to figure out is what is your thought process that you're not thinking and it's not at the forefront of your mind that you could be doing 20 years in prison i'm sure your attorney has spoken to you about this I don't take any joy or pleasure in sending the people to prison. When I place people on probation, I'm hoping that they're going to be successful. I want them to be successful. I want them to turn their life around. I don't want them to come back before me unless they're coming back before me to say, I've learned a lot. You'll never see me again for this. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. So I'm talking about in terms of that. Is there anything else you need from the court? No, Your Honor. All right, then uh, I'll sentence you to state ISF cognitive, taking consideration 714734 and 714735. Once you're released from state ISF, you need to immediately contact your probation officer. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, we can go off the record from here on out. Everything that you do, you need to ask yourself two questions. One, at the point where you're on, is this something that could potentially result in me going to prison for 20 years? If the answer is yes, don't do it. If the answer is maybe, don't do it. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Good luck to you. Always good seeing you, Mr. Powers. Thank you, Judge.